To understand PTHD <clears throat> is to understand how the mind works. <clears throat> Your brain is the most awesome creation to me that God has made. Because without your brain, your body can do nothing, right? <clears throat> we all know this. But the design of your brain is just brilliant. So your brain is where all things are stored and recorded, right? Now, your brain has what we call neurons to help share this genius with the rest of the body, right? Your brain has neurons that looks like little spider webs all through your, your brain. <clears throat> and these brains have sparks that share information with the left side, the right side, the back side, the front side. And then it has is connected to your spine and your nervous system. Your spine and nervous system sends information that's sparking up in the brain through the rest of your body to the right place it needs to go to assist you or aid you in this situation that your eyes are sending the message to. Your eyes are the window to your brain and your brain is reacting to what it sees. It sparks automatically. Someone's trying to swing at you. Your brain is sparking. Hey, someone's swinging at us. Move the left arm and knock him down. <laughs> Bow and you do it. Right. And it does it because of experiences and understanding because it's in fear and it just wants to protect you. And it becomes what we call muscle memory. Remember, muscle pointing at the muscle, memory pointing at the head. If I want to lose weight, you build my body back up and get muscles again at 48. What I got to do, y'all? Get a gym membership, right? How many people here got a gym membership? <laughs> Besides on January 1st, after Thanksgiving and Christmas. Talk to me. <laughs> I get it. Well, when you go to the gym and you lift those weights from the first time, you're building muscle memory. That's how you get muscles because your brain is giving it everything it needs when you're lifting this muscle and tearing your muscle down. It's going to send you the information, that part of the body, the information to help rebuild. Hey, he's tearing down the muscle. Let's give it some more. So you start get building muscle eventually. So whenever you walk into the gym you, and you pull up at the gym and it sees gym, your eyes are telling the brain get ready. When you walk in and you get dressed, your eyes are telling the brain to get ready. When you walk in... To the, to the first weight, your eyes are getting ready. When you lift it, your brain is telling you, send him the information he needs. It's muscle memory. We remember this already. Do you get it? You can build muscle memory based upon anything you redundantly repeat. You know why you love sex so much? Because you remember it. You remember the feeling. It can last 25, 30 minutes. But it's that split second burst of energy you get. We call it orgasm. That your brain remembers and you want to do it again. Because it sends those endorphins over your body to make you feel good. Like drugs would. Right? Now, what happens if we build muscle memory based upon tragedies and atrocities and genocidal culture we call the hood. What do you think would happen? Right? What do you think would happen? What would your brain do? Something different? No. It's going to do the same thing it was designed to do. For instance, I grew up in South Central LA in the 80s. I saw Los Angeles transform from a pleasant place where you can just go outside and play with the homies and have fun, throw football, play, throw a tackle in the street, go to the park, play basketball, do all of that stuff. And it transformed into a war zone. Crack came in, tore it up. The gangs were already there. The gangs were al always there when I was growing up there. But you would just see a fight here and there and you got normal. You got used to the fight. You built muscle memories of, of understanding that these cats are just fighting. Uh, let's move on. But it got to a point in the mid 80s where it was like, 
Someone will walk up to you and say, hey, what's up, bro? You heard what happened to Tony? And when I heard that phrase, muscle memory again, <clears throat> I already knew Tony was dead or he was in jail because he killed somebody or he sold some dope who tried to rob someone for robbing someone's stole. So I knew one of the three happened. It was automatic tragedy had happened to Tony. Why? Because in the neighborhood, that was normal. And in that environment, we had to normalize it to survive it. We had to normalize it to survive it. If we didn't normalize it, we wouldn't have survived it. So our brain is wants to protect us, remember? So it's trying to protect us from what's the environment that we're in. If I'm in the Serengeti and I'm just walking down the path, just, just oblivious, and a lion jumps out of the gate, out of the bushes, what is your brain going to do? Help you survive it. Run, dummy. The fires are going to go off in your brain and send it to your feet and say, get the hell out of here. You can't beat him. The same thing happens to us when we're in the hood. The same thing happens to us when we're in the hood. We normalize the atrocities of our life. We normalize these gang hangers, the ones who actually are out there doing the work of the plantations back in slave times or the Ku Klux Klan back in the Jim Crow days that was hanging our own people and killing them. Do you know that the gang members have killed more pe black people than the Ku Klux Klan has in history? Do you know that? We make songs and, and, and promote rappers. We cry when the gang members are dead or because they, 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 they ate their own poison. They fell victim to their own messages. Anytime we celebrate anyone who talked about a gang hanger culture that has killed probably any one of you relatives. Most of us in here who grew up in these environments lost somebody to this situation, be it the grave or the penitentiary. Why is this celebrated? What in your brain has normalized this to the point you celebrate it? You make these people rich. They're on TV with Ferraris and big houses and money stacks to their ear because you're promoting it and you are, a, you are in cahoots with it yourself. You have normalized it. But are we going to survive it that way? Your brain and your neurons in your body has normalized it and created muscle memory to accept this trauma of living in the hood. And that, my friend, is post-traumatic hood disorder or PTHD. If you have lived in the hood, you have PTHD. I don't care if you're in the suburbs right now. I don't care if you're working in a Fortune 500 corner penthouse suite office. I don't care right now. If you came from the hood, you took that hood to that office. You took that hood to the suburbs because you have not reprogrammed your mind with new muscle memory to not accept that. Because I guarantee you, when you leave that house in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in the suburbs, when you leave your office in that Fortune 500 corner suite penthouse, when you get in your car, what are you playing? When you go to the club, what are you dancing to? When you in the backyard boogie barbecue party eating the death food, what are you listening to? When you're on social media, what are you paying most attention to? When you're watching movies, what are you watching the most? Is it positive? Does it have death in it? Does it have destruction in it? Does it have anything in it that resembles where you came from? Ha <laughs> ha. 
Yes, it does. I'm sure. Because you have PTHD. Just now have PTHD in a different neighborhood, in a different pay grade. PTHD follows you because your brain follows you. The one thing that goes with you everywhere you go is your mind. And once it's poison, you have to rewire it. If you don't rewire it, what are you expecting to happen? That's why PTHD is so important to pay attention to. We can't make the changes in our community without rewiring our minds. Unplugging from that trauma. It's not easy. If you saw New Jack City, you saw Pookie being dragged into the into the drug rehab situation. He didn't voluntarily go. He went kicking and screaming. And to me, the soul stealers that I talked about are the ones who are stealing people's soul. Literally. Have you ever seen someone on drugs? I remember back in the 80s, they were talking about people that was on heroin was like superhuman. It was either heroin or Sharon, one of the two. But they was acting like they were just superhuman. Remember when they beat Rodney King? They was, they was claiming that he was on this drug and he was just superhuman so he can just take it. Like it was like a possession or something. Drugs mess with your mind. They alter your mind. And they create muscle memory also. So that you can feel good for this hit so you can keep coming back to it. That's why it's so addictive. But it, it, it steals your soul. It destroys your soul. Why is that important, right? Well, I practice an African spirituality called Ifa. And if I, we believe that our Ari is the number one deity, the number one deity, the number one deity closest to the God that sent you to this planet. When you were in the spirit realm, we also believe that you made a decision of what you wanted to do on this planet. We call it your destiny. That decision that you agreed to in the spirit realm is planted inside your Ori so that your mind, which I told you, makes all the decisions that you choose. Your mind is supposed to play out that agreement. Anything you allow in your mind to destroy your mind is destroying your soul and your agreement. There is no crackhead in this on this planet that was sent here to be a crackhead. That drug pushed them and made them addicted to it to distract them from their actual purpose. I've never seen a crackhead at a Fortune 500 company. I've never seen a crackhead doctor. I've never seen a crackhead, a true crackhead, pookie, gator, lawyer. That person's soul has been stolen. That purpose, that person's purpose has been denied because of a drug that is impeding their destiny. And the people who are selling it are the soul stealers of our community. But we celebrate them. Because they have money, because they have what the world has said is what's of value, because the world that we come from doesn't value character. It doesn't value love. It doesn't value purpose. It values the things you can get out the microwave. It values the thing that the people, I won't say any names, but the people who have put these things in our way to steal our souls. Gang hangers are doing the work of the plantation. Soul stealers are doing the work of the Ku Klux Klan to where they ain't got to do it no more. You do it through muscle memory. That muscle memory I'm talking about is the very thing PTHD is made of. 